on item two and when you're up again with a discussion on traffic calming. Yes, um, so I'm going to share a different presentation and uh, please let me know if everybody can see this. Okay, so thank you so much uh, for having me again to talk about um, traffic calming. This is a subject that I'm, I'm very passionate about, um, especially that's something that uh, we're being very proactive with our um, data and our research. Um, as we're transitioning, um, let's talk about why do we need traffic calming itself. Uh, we design our streets so that we could serve everybody, but yet what happened is sometimes when um, drivers go through an area, we tend to, you know, it's not our neighborhood, so we tend to speed up. And um, that's not necessarily uh, the, the right community that we want to, uh, the right streets that we want to design for our communities. So research has found, and all this data has been, um, you know, uh, is found on FHWA, that um, we can reduce crashes from 50 to 90% by installing the appropriate traffic calming and traffic calming devices in our community. And uh, there's been study that uh, conducted uh, in the, even in the early 2000s that shows that traffic calming is very efficient and it's actually very um, effective. So I'm going to go through what is the history of West Palm Beach and where we're at today. The, uh, for, from our knowledge, we started traffic calming projects in the early ni uh, 90s. And with that, we created a, an ordinance to retroactively talk about like, how do we, what is traffic calming and what are the, the, the strategy where uh, residents can you know, can advocate for traffic calming within their street. Uh, of course, uh, we start working on the downtown mobility study and then Vision, Vision Zero is like the focal point of this project. And as we know that speed kills, so that the way we design our streets is the way that um, we target how fast vehicles are um, drive, uh, are going for. So for example, you only have a, um, study shows that you only have 20% chance of actually surviving a collision if you're in a coll uh, collided with a, a person in a vehicle at uh, 40 miles per hour or above. So we want to take our neighborhood streets down and that's our strategy is to lower, uh, arbitrarily lower the speed limit without changing a sign, but um, these strategies can help us create a more efficient and um, uh, safe uh, environment. And uh, what is uh, traffic calming in the city of West Palm Beach? Uh, we have many. I believe that we have almost everything in the manual that's out there, from curb extension, chicane, traffic circle, to um, our traditional speed humps. And as you traverse through uh, our, uh, our cities, you'll see a little bit of everything. And that's uh, to me, that's very excited to see that uh, we've been testing and piloting. Uh, so what the, the effectiveness of traffic calming can be really quantified in two ways like quantitative data, which we, uh, as engineers, that that's what we look for. What's the reduction of 85th percentile speed? And that's typically what we look for whenever we, we look at how effective something is. And then the other aspect of it is, um, you know, the qualitative data, like perceptual data. Are, are, are people, do few people feel safer? Are um, the requests or the complaints reduced in our streets? Do, uh, how do we actively be proactive in responding to our, our residents? And so with, these type of data, it helps shape and determine what our traffic calming standards are. So I want to share with you some research data from the ITE, the Institute of Traffic Engineers, on speed. And, what, and I'm primarily focused on circles, which are roundabouts, and uh, speed humps. And the reason why is because it is very effective. As you can see, the speed hump itself has an average change of um, 20 to 23 percent and reduction of speed in mean speed itself. And so the other data is actually traffic volume, right? So sometimes I get um, uh, comments and questions um, saying that, hey, you know, uh, if you install this traffic circle here, uh, more people are going to go down my street. That's not necessarily true. If you look at the data, it says that the average percentage of change in volume, which means diversion, right? If you um, looked at installing a traffic circle, you have the least amount of diversion when you look at this type of strategy. Of course, speed humps itself is um, our preferred method to look at cut through neighborhoods. Um, sometimes when you're, for example, you're in Flamingo Park and you cross the railroad, that's typically where we like to see uh, speed humps because you, we get a lot, our, our network is very gridded and that's where the cut throughs are happening. And then lastly, um, safety. Collision is very, very important. I think the percentage of change is, um, is it's, uh, you know, you, you're probably thinking like, uh, sometimes I get questions, why can't you just 
put a stop sign right there. But that's not really an appropriate use of, of traffic calming device. That's a traffic control device. So what we want to uh, ensure is that sometimes when you stop, put in so many stop signs, you see people trying to gain at their speed by speeding up between stop signs. And that's not necessarily the right uh, application also. And so from a collision standpoint, the speed humps itself has, a, it's very effective. And with that, we, uh, we took all this research data, we consulted with a, um, a consultant that uh, did even more extensive research and look at uh, technical references and effectiveness. And then we went through a very thorough review process between engineering, public works, public utilities, and our construction office. And one of the things that we looked at as we are developing our standards and as we're modern, um, uh, updating our standards is um, to look at maintenance responsibilities. And I think this is really important because I have been in some really difficult situation where um, you know signs are not um, properly placed or uh, or uh, you know uh, these things are not being maintained. So we want to ensure that whatever we choose, it will help our public works department with their budget and, and like uh, with the reduction of um, staff that they have. So we, we carefully take that into consideration as we're making our recommendations. And then of course, anytime you um, add in something new, add in a new sidewalk, add in a new speed hump, there are additional maintenance responsibility that goes above and beyond. So um, the, here is an image of our um, traffic circle that is a standard. Um, this was already implemented in the uh, Northwood, um, Northwood Historic Neighborhood up there. Um, and one of the things that we saw is that these many circles, the crossing shouldn't be at the intersection. It should be pulled back away from the intersection because when you're entering in this circle, you're not necessarily looking for pedestrian because you're all, always looking for vehicles. So the appropriately uh, used crosswalk at a circle is approximately 20 feet away from the intersection. And so some of those things um, is what are finding as we go through this process. The other thing that I want to focus on is the speed hump. And we have, um, as you can see from the image earlier, and as you can see in our city, we have a lot of speed humps, a different type of speed humps, very uh, beautifully done speed humps. But this is the standard speed hump that is recommended by the um, ITE. And, uh, you know, they're, uh, to, for, for optimal spacing. I, I do want to touch a point on um, signage within the speed hump though. Anytime you have a vertical deflection, you have to have a sign next to it, just like stop bars goes with stop signs. So it's very important that we have to have signage next to the speed hump. And I, I know I get, I, I've received some concern from residents saying that this is a historic neighborhood. Historically, we don't have signs on our speed hump, but speed humps are not historic. Uh, use anyway, because when you we built the historic neighborhood, there were no speed humps to be there to begin with. But the importance of the signs is, is actually very important because it's recommended out of the MUTCD, which is the Manual, uh, manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Uh, this manual uh, helped us shape a uh, uh, uniformity, right? If you travel to another state, you know what a stop sign looks like, you know what a street signs looks like. And so this is what guide all engineers in the country. And this is, uh, and so I just want to uh, emphasize on the importance of having signage. The other emphasis I want to make is uh, the importance of having signage is actually the effectiveness of the retro reflectivity of a traffic sign. So as you can see, these are two uh, different speed humps that, um, that I've um, taken, one during the day and one at night. And as you can see, we don't naturally have lights everywhere. And so the, the effectiveness of having a change in the roadway is actually adds to the concern safety that we have. So signage is very, very important. And of course, um, with the city, we talked about like, where are, uh, from a maintenance standpoint, we focus on red and white, which is regulatory, and then yellow, which are warning. So those are our, our tier uh, focus at this time. And so um, you've probably, you've seen this already, the effectiveness of traffic calming, especially in um, at providing a uh, traffic circle at a roundabout, we see that there is quite a bit of um, reduction in 85th per tantile speed. The other thing that I was concerned about when I was um, going through this project and just doing a lot of research is that there has been a, um, a perception that like traffic calming uh, reduces response time. And really it, it's, uh, it can't evolve from this article right here from the New York um, 
the fire department and to talk about how um, Vision Zero in general has affected them. But really, when you look into the uh, data and you look into uh, the article, that there's been a lot of private construction and ride share services. So remember what we talked about smart loading and some of that safety concern? So that's the, the biggest culprit. So we we did we spent a day with our fire department, our, our team, our transportation team, spent a day with the dive, uh, and we visit five different locations. They're approximately a thousand foot in segments, and we carefully pick them because they have different type of traffic calming devices. So we, we watch, we time, we experience what it's like to be in a fire um, truck, and we, we, we looked at what is the average speed that uh, our fire trucks are tra traversing through our right of way. And what is, uh, how long, how much time does it take? The other thing that we've done is we had one-on-one -on -one interviews with the assistant chief and um, the, the firefighters that, that helped us that day. And what are their challenges when they're driving to their city? Is it speed bumps? Is it stop signs? Is it traffic circle? What are the, the issues? So. To our surprise, and it was the biggest surprise for me, is the tree branches actually affects the way the tree canopy affect, affects the way that uh, 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 the turning vehicle sign placement. Whenever we're, our signs are too close to the intersection, so that's something that we have to look at. And then lastly, our potholes. So uh, I guess that is traffic calming in a sense, uh, in a not very funny way. I apologize for that, uh, but. Crowded streets due to high parking utilization is the most, the biggest challenge. And that's one of the things that we need to uh, work on. And we do these tests, right? We, we, we target different communities and that's what we want to do, continue to work with the fire department to see how we can change parking policies and to help with response time. And especially with, um, with uh, rescue as, a, as a public safety as a concern. The other thing that was a real surprise uh, for me is that the fire department preferred bike lanes with no on-street parking because it there's no on-street parking. It's easier for them to get to their destination. And then lastly, uh, it further validates the need for signage with speed humps because some of these um, areas, the signs are, maybe they're a little old or they're non-existent. So, if you look at the data on responses, the majority of the responses is actually in the afternoon and they respond all the way into the evening. So that the, without signage, it's actually becomes a hazard issues for our public safety. So we're very thankful for and grateful for the experience and really connect with the fire department. And that helps shape us uh, within our recommendation and it helps shape our policy on how we design our streets in the future as well. So what is, we have an ordinance and what is the traffic calming process itself, right? How can someone receive traffic calming? There's two ways. There's a city initiated and typically uh, we do, uh, we see that an area might be a safety concern. We looked at crash data um, and then we get a lot of maintenance of requests from public works. Uh, and that's where the area that we tried to, to focus on as we, um, the other way that someone could uh, lobby and um, essentially uh, obtain traffic calming is through a resident initiated. There is a very thorough process that they have to go through, uh, which is ensuring that they apply and making sure that they have uh, meet the minimum criteria and obtain 50 to 75% uh, of signatures within the, the block. Everybody has to be on board. From there, we as engineers will conduct a safety study and then we make a recommendation to the traffic advisory or traffic calming advisory committee. And the advisory committee is comprised by our fire police, our different departments, and then of course, a, mem a member of the public to tell us that they concur or disagree. And maybe there's some recommendations that uh, it could be tweaked moving forward. From there, we will, um, enhance our design and um, to, and get feedback from our public works department. And then we make a presentation to the city commission. Um, ultimately, uh, if and when it passes, we create a budget request and then we go move into construction activities. So that is the process that we have mapped out for anybody who's interested in obtaining traffic calming on their street. So this is the code, section 86-350. It, it talks about what are the minimum requirements, right? When you apply for traffic calming, you have to meet these minimum requirements, such as the streets that's not an alley or a dead end. Nobody's really um, driving fast on those streets except for the residents that's living there to, to begin with. So we, we try to discourage that type of um, uh, installation. Uh, but I think what's really important is that the signatures, making sure that uh, it, because this is a grassroots effort, making sure that residents along the streets concur with you. And that's very, very important for us. 
And so I'm going to show you guys um, a project that is city initiated uh, that's been on hold. It's Olive Avenue. It is a maintenance project. Um, it's identified from um, Southern Boulevard all the way to Okeechobee. It's, it's approximately two miles long. There's existing bike facilities on there already. But what we found is that the 85th percentile along there is 37 miles per hour. It's very, very high. If anything, we had a, um, a, a, uh, a collision on earlier um, in the last, previous two months, I believe, where uh, it ended up being a fatality. So we enhance the design to look at how we can we simply mark it to be uh, more visible for users and then adding in additional speed humps in between. And of course, our spacing that we're trying to target is about, uh, it's approximately 500 feet, right? It should be between 350 to 500 feet so that vehicles are, uh, could be slowing down before they can pick up speed and they'll hit another speed bump. So right now, this is the data that we um, pull of the crash history and where are what type of crashes that we get uh, along that area. There are existing uh, one uh, traffic circle, which is the big Norton circle that we worked on about five and a half years ago, and then three speed bumps along the corridor. So what we want to do is take this opportunity to really enhance what we have. And by adding in additional speed humps and adding in additional signage to properly warn. So why I'm showing this is because um, we didn't have a chance to do community outreach. Uh, we did reach out to a uh, resident. There's different, uh, different neighborhood association along with um, PBAU along the corridor that uh, in one particular instance that I believe it was completely miscommunicated back to uh, other residents. This is not a brand new project. This is a maintenance project. What we're trying to do is enhance what is already out there because it's very important for us to connect Olive all the way from the end of the city from um, Gregory Road into our downtown. So this is our primary route and it's an alternative route also that connects uh, our neighborhoods. Um, and so, uh, and so I just want to show you, uh, there are going to be 87 additional speed humps along here and uh, a total of two, 125 signs. I also had a, uh, a comment saying that this is way too many signs. So I just want to, um, to compare with this particular project, two miles, and compare to another project that we recently did in Commissioner Schultz District, which is Spruce. It's about um, 0.6, miles. And within that section, we had approximately 200 signs in that. And that's very appropriate, the amount of signage that we have for a traffic calm street. So um, for us to compare uh, what in that street and what we are proposing here, it's actually very reasonable for us to, to apply this application. So uh, with that, what are our moving forward? What are our um, strategy moving forward? So we are very focused on being proactive because when you're proactive, you, um, you address the equity issue as we can uh, con talk about um, uh, connecting neighborhoods. Uh, really collector roads and those are um are streets such as um like the north south route right we're talking about spruce is one of them we talked about Olo, uh lake avenue we're actively working on already uh, parker is the other one so those are our primary north south connector that we're looking at so we want to be proactive and, uh, and to be supportive of the, the uh, vision zero initiatives and and more importantly, we are working hand in hand with the Department of Public Works to talk about where are our challenges and where do we want to talk about our maintenance. So how can we help as engineers to uh, one, identify where our, um, what is missing to do inventory and to help us um, get to that point. Uh, ultimately, uh, you know, our traffic calming advisory committee was a little stagnant. And so we want to um, reinitiate that effort and creating it um, taking some of these case study and presenting it to the committee um, for upcoming projects, as well as just not being reactive on the cases that was submitted by residents. So historically, we bring cases from residents to the committee, but we also want to now being proactive and bring uh, street projects and projects initiated from the engineering department or public utilities department and bring it to the committee for recommendation and what else we can do. And then lastly, it's, um, you know, this is something that I'm actively trying to work on is to incorporate public safety recommendations in every um, project that we do. 
Um, so we have one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls with our fire department yesterday on a different project. And you know, a lot of things that we don't think about as engineers and as designers is uh, it's really interesting is the placement of a tree can actually affect the way that they respond. So we always have to take balance uh, all that and take into consideration their comments. And at this time, it concludes my presentation and I'm, uh, we're here for questions. Mayor, you're muted. Mayor, you're muted. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation, very fine. Um, how is the Traffic Advisory Committee uh, selected? Um, the, um, advisory committee. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the member of the public is a um, nomination from um, the mayor's office. The committee itself um, identify a uh, within the department, for example, it's no longer say a member. Uh, it used to say the director of public utilities. Now it's a representative of the utilities department. So that uh, each individual department nominates an employee um, to, uh, to sit on our uh, our, our committee. For example, in the fire department, um, uh, Assistant Chief uh, LeDuc is part of the committee and he is uh, very well attended. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a few questions. Uh, Commissioner Peduzzi. Thank you, Mayor, and I really appreciate this presentation. Uh, I found it really compelling, um, the correlation between the speed on a road and the, um, the significance of injury and, and fatalities. Um, so I think that traffic calming is a very important uh, thing that we, we should be doing in our city. Um, you know, as far as, and I also appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to ride with our fire department uh, to see what their concerns are when it comes to traffic calming, because traditionally um, it's been a concern to uh, apparatus operators, the traditional speed bumps um, are a problem when you're transporting a patient. They're a significant problem because there's no way to get over them without creating problems for the patient in the back, especially with IVs in and, and doing CPR and things like that. Um, could you just talk a little bit about how these speed humps are not speed bumps and that they are capable of being able to, you know, to go over, as I understand it, without jostling everyone, um, you know, in the, in the apparatus? Um, uh, right. So there, um, there's uh, earlier in the presentation, I focused on two types of speed bumps, um, uh, and I'm going to name them um, based on their official name. One is an ITE, which is a little shorter and a little taller, and a seminal, which is a little more plateau and flat. So uh, we uh, we talked to the fire department, we looked at their routes, and we looked at if there are speed humps, like for example, um, Olive, which is a primary north-south route, um, the preferred application method is the um, the plateau, the seminal speed humps. And those are the applications that we looked at our collector roads, right? For example, if it's a cut through road, east-west routes, that is a traditional neighborhood, we tend to uh, look at a higher ITE speed humps. So we use them interchangeably based on how we think that the uh, the routes of um, the public safety access is going to, to affect their but I do agree with you. Uh, one of the things that I've learned really clearly is that uh, it is very uh, bumpy, but um, it also affects a patient if their back is hurt or, or like you said, if they're injured. Okay, uh, Commissioner Fox. Thank you. Thanks, Gwen, so much for all you're doing to keep our roads safe. Um, I just had a question about when you were talking about sort of identifying the areas that maybe need traffic calming and then working closely with the residents. I thank you for that. I you know really appreciate you know, all the communication you do with them. But I guess my question is if you have identified an area and is there ever a time that the residents disagree and don't want it? And then what happens in that case? You know, if we're suggesting that it needs traffic calming, but they don't want it, you know, but we have the responsibility to also be keeping, you know, drivers safe. And so I mean it, I just wonder what happens in that situation. And is it because of the specific kind of traffic coming? Like, is it sometimes that they would prefer something else um, or do we overrule them? I'm just curious what would happen if that has come up. Uh, yes, it actually has come up very frequently. Um, so there's uh, uh, two, two, um, uh, 
scenario. Uh, that's why the application process is very important for us. And I know that I've also received some comments um, where people don't want to get the application process. They want us to initiate. That's that's not necessarily uh, appropriate because we want to make sure that every neighbor, and especially this is a majority rule type of ordinance that we set um, uh, in place, that 75% of residents on the block agrees to it. And of course, we also have one or two of those who very is very against it, but we also defer and refer back to, this is the community joint effort, and this is something that is, um, you know, it's, uh, it should be respected with everybody that's living on the block and not just an individual. The other thing that we found is when we look at city initiated project that it's um, we don't get a chance to communicate with everybody on individually uh, because this is a safety concern that we have um, for the corridor so we try to connect with them uh, even though one-on-one -on -one or through uh, group meetings but it's it's also you know part of our job is to um, to gain to get them to understand that this is for the safety and security of everybody that's using the corridor. I know that it affects those who are individual who's living there on the corridor. But for example, like the Olive Project, right? You already have traffic coming. It's just not placed properly. So if, if you know people understand that they want a reduction of speed, they don't understand that necessarily how do you get there as far as the, the goals and the strategy. So um, and so we try to uh, connect with them. And obviously, you know, Commissioner, it's always very difficult that we, we know we can't please everybody, but we know that this is a recommendation that um, is for the better good and it, it, takes, um, it takes a team of effort. So, um, and sometimes when we connect with them, it might not be a signage and it might not be something, they're just really angry that people are driving really fast on the street, so. Okay, very good. Um, Madam President, uh, you had a question? Thank you very much, Mayor, and, and thank you, Wen, for your presentation. I know you mentioned a number of times the Spruce project up here, and I know there's been a number of learnings from that project. Um, so I, I had two questions, actually. One, you know, looking at things like the roundabouts that are here on Spruce, what we have found is we understand it's a, a larger line of sight to get to the crosswalk but it's increasingly more difficult to influence people's behaviors. So um, those who are um, needing to use a crosswalk, be it in a wheelchair, et cetera, may go to where there's a ramp, but those who are walking a lot of times don't follow that crosswalk anyway and cross in the line of sight and understanding you can't, you know, stand out there all day, every day and police people going across the street. Is there a better way to try to make an adjustment? Are we, are we looking at, Kind of right tool, right job, because I know we've had a number of um, you know comments back and forth on speed bumps as well as what kind of speed bump is appropriate to use in what kind of neighborhood. So how do we make those adjustments and determine kind of right tool, right job for traffic calming? Um, sure. Um, so to speak on the crosswalk itself, um, you know we have to follow um, strict ADA guidelines. And um, we have to design for the lowest um, common denominator, and those are people with um, who, who aren't able. And so, uh, with these type of um, the proposed design, it comes into a lot of consideration for um, ADA access, and that is who we're designing for: people um, in, in wheelchairs or strollers, uh, and might be might need to to cross at those locations. The other thing is that um, there's significant like crash data that suggests that um, these especially mini circles should be designed a certain way. And that is like to pull back 20 feet from the intersection uh, for a crosswalk, because that is a length of a single occupancy uh, vehicle. I know we cannot change behavior. I, I hope that we could uh, educate. Uh, and this is probably one of the E's in the vision zero is that we know that engineering can reduce the speed, but part of it is uh, educating the, the general public on where to cross. And um, to speak on the other part that you, that you asked about um, what type of speed hump is appropriate. You know, um, and I, I know some, uh, whenever we make this installation, it's it's very important that we be consistent and what type of installation we make in um, what type of neighborhood. 
And so I have received um, comments uh, from different neighborhoods that says, we want the pretty ones, we want the, the nicer pavered one, but that's not necessarily the ones that we're installing in low income neighborhoods. So I want to be very consistent on how we've done that, but we also have given, uh, we have given um, communities uh, a different, um, uh, uh, option at that point. One uh, offered to pay for the uh, the, the upgrades. Um, there's some one uh, one particular um, neighborhood. I believe it was Edgewood and Commissioner Lambert's uh, district uh, that uh, they wanted grass. So. No problem. We uh, we install the uh, the application, and at the end of the day, they've actually taken over maintenance responsibility of the traffic calming devices by signing an agreement with the city. So we're very open to different type of strategy to make it more equitable for all communities. Sure, and just one follow up, if I may, Mayor. Yes. Um, one of those other conditions, when that you described, was um, going from stop sign to stop sign, and you have those that choose to try to speed up to. Beat, beat the stop sign almost. That's a condition that we have a lot in the North End, sp specifically along Poinsettia, um, along Tamron Avenue. So when you have large spans of road like that to do a, a citizen initiated process, um, what's a 75% of the block look like when we're looking at kind of a, a semi-major roadway going through a community? Um, right. Uh, and a lot of time we rely on the neighborhood association as a, um, you know, because they're, especially in point setting, I can tell you that for us to establish a stop sign, there's very strict guidance on how we can put a stop sign at the intersection, an all-way phase stop sign. And that's with uh, uh, vehicles, you know, how are, how many cars is going in each direction? And that's what we looked at. Um, I think that for that particular instance, please have the community connect with me. We might want to do a resolution from the association itself if they, are, um, they have a support letter. And that's something that we can initiate on our end and it'd be, because that is a, a primary north-south route also, that could be a city initiated project. Thank you. Okay, uh, very good. Um, uh, Commissioner Lambert. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for the presentation, Wynn, and I you know, appreciate both you and Commissioner Shove mentioning the community education um, piece and how important that is, and I, I see this as a part of that. Um, also wanted to say thank you for working directly with our fire department. I'm sure it's not the first time that you all have done that, but it's really great to hear about this kind of collaboration and to see how we adjust things based on what you learned in a hands-on situation. Um, I have a couple of questions and First, I want to ask, is this the same project that, and you referenced it in your presentation, I think it was about six months ago that was presented that had a lot of folks in, in these communities on all of coming out and speaking out against it. And if it is, is there anything that's changed, whether it be logistically or via community outreach? Um, yes, uh, to answer your question, yes, it is the same project. Uh, we did not have a chance to uh, connect with the community and have a formal communication um, presentation prior to going to construction. Um, we are planning on uh, reaching to uh, the residents after uh, this presentation to the mayor and commission. I do think that the uh, the concern that the in one particular neighborhood, because we have different neighborhoods, we have Mango Promenade, we had the FAU's uh, itself, which is supportive of, of this project, or I'm sorry, PBAU. Uh, but I think what we need to um, better uh, to to outreach again, and and, and really to give the residents um, the reason why we're doing this. And you have the crash data, you have the the, the, uh, the, um, the speed data along the corridor. But the, what, what more importantly, because I think it's the emails that has been going around, and I believe everybody almost have seen one version of it, is wildly miscommunicated of what is the design and it's being interpreted in a uh, in a false way, because we we are presenting an additional of you know eighty something speed humps, and with each speed humps, it comes with two signs. We're not we're doing the bare minimum uh, as far as like appropriate signage, and I, I think with some of the outcry and the outrage is very one sided, and I, I believe that the city didn't have an opportunity to really state the fact. Here's the data. This is what we're doing, and this is how it's going to help. And we're also we measure 
also. The other section of olive that we completed, we found that there's a reduction of 8% uh, in 85th percentile speed immediately uh, after this installation. So part of our pro project and process is to uh, propose a design, um, communicate, um, and then ultimately to report back. Here's what's happening. Here are the reduction of speed along the border. Thank you. And Mayor, just a suggestion, you know, whether it's this project or other projects, you know, I think that it's really important that we communicate what the project is and the design, but when I like what you're saying about the why, and, you know, I just think that whether it's six months prior to or a year or just ongoing, that maybe that's something the city could look at as far as our communications is, and, and I'm, I know we've been doing this with Vision Zero, but just continuing to keep those conversations top of mind all the time so that when these issues come up, it's not having to restart the wheel of um, talking about how important safety is for these types of projects. A very good point. Any other questions on uh, this item, traffic calming? Okay, Wynn, thank you again. Uh, you did a yeoman's job today, a couple of uh, uh, significant presentations. We appreciate your efforts.